week on the Gadget Show Web TV, Otis is testing out a new solar-powered charger. And John's got a first look at the latest Blu-ray player from LG. Plus the latest in Gadget Tech news. Hello and welcome once again to the Gadget Show Web TV. Later, Otis is out and about testing a new solar-powered charger, but now here's John with a first look at the latest Blu-ray player with built-in YouTube. With so much of our TV watching taking place over the internet these days, it's not surprising that manufacturers of what was once previously offline equipment, like uh, TVs and disc players, are now incorporating internet connectivity into their products. And with their latest Blu-ray player, LG are no exception. This BD370, in fact, goes a stage further. It's the world's first Blu-ray player with YouTube playback built in. Now, obviously, you'll need to connect it to the internet to do that. And the first disappointment is that it doesn't come with wireless connectivity. In fact, you have to connect an ethernet cable into the back. I've actually used one of these uh, mains ethernet adapters where the other end is connected into my router upstairs. Connection was extremely straightforward. As soon as I switched it on, there was the YouTube icon on the home screen. Click on that and there's a rather elegant YouTube interface. There's a bar at the top to help you navigate through with the sort of things you might expect, like featured videos, recent videos, most viewed, top rated, and search. That's what I'm going to go for first of all, and search for some of our videos. Now, obviously you don't have a keyboard, so you've got to arrow your way around one of these letter pads, which is uh, quite a time-consuming process, actually. I'm going to put Gadget Show in there and see if we can look at some of our fine video offerings on YouTube. Aha! And I'll go for one of our Web TV episodes. Once you're in the video, you can press the display button on the remote to toggle between a sort of embedded video display or a full screen display, and you get a progress bar across the bottom, which irritating me, I can't seem to find a way of switching off manually. It does disappear automatically after a little while, but it'd be nicer to have more control. I was slightly disappointed you don't get the quality options you get when you're uh, looking at YouTube on your computer, and it seems to have adopted by default the lower quality option. Perhaps that's something they could address in a software upgrade. You can also sign in if you want to and select your country, which narrows down the search options. So the YouTube experience is pretty good. What about the rest of it? Well, it looks a elegant machine. There's this central on-off button here in the middle, which glows uh, red, purple, or blue, depending on what it's doing. And that's flanked by a panel to press to open and close the tray, or indeed to play and pause. Disc loading times are impressive. It's under a minute from propping in a Blu-ray disc to actually watching a film, which is good for that format. And the picture quality is good too, as is the sound. There's uh, digital outputs, so coaxial or optical at the back for multi-channel. Although you don't get multi-channel analog outputs, which could be a problem if that bothers you. Normal DVDs play back well, and CD audio is good too. So overall, it's a very impressive player. But a couple of extra factors also make it stand out. First, the price. You can pick it up for well under 200 quid. And secondly, it does support quite a few other useful formats. If you pull down the front flap, there's a USB socket, and you can stick in a pen drive and uh, play back uh, quite a lot of downloaded videos. Normal sort of AVI ones, DivX, also the high-definition MKV format. It doesn't play back everything, though. It claims to be able to play AVCHD files, such as you might get from your camcorder. But I tried a Canon's and a Panasonic's AVCHD files, and it just wouldn't recognize them. Also, it won't uh, play back the sort of movies your stills camera might shoot on MP4. Overall, though, it's a very capable Blu-ray player at a very reasonable price. And that YouTube feature is certainly more than a gimmick. Right, news time now, and if any of you are lucky enough to live in or near to Brighton, then you might be excited to hear that the UK's first arcade guitar hero 
will be at Brighton Pier. At the minute, 10 Guitar Hero arcade machines are situated at the pier in the Palace of Fun. It was developed in collaboration with Activision, Konami and Raw Thrills and incorporates two-player gameplay with the option to choose from 11 different characters. Now, the only downside is you will have to rock out in public instead of your own home. But if you are in the area, go and check it out and let us know if it's any good. It was announced at this year's NAB show that Panasonic is developing a 1080p twin lens system camera for 3D filming. The 3D Full HD camcorder is still only a prototype, but it appears that Panasonic are planning on releasing this as soon as possible. It will have a twin lens system that can capture 3D footage at 1080p, and all the footage will be stored on a professional P2 solid state memory card. There's no news yet on exactly when it will be released or how much it will cost, but with Hollywood Studios heading towards 3D entertainment, it looks like Panasonic is taking a giant step in the right direction. Now it's time for Otis and his solar-powered charger, the Power Gorilla. We've all been there, talking on the phone or playing on our favourite portable games console and we've run out of juice and there's nowhere to charge or recharge them. What do you do? Well, you could carry one of these around with you. This is the Power Gorilla and it's portable energy essentially you charge it up at home from your mains and then you can use it to operate devices at 16 19 or 24 volts now I managed to charge my 19 volt laptop here for an additional five hours by using this it can charge or power just about anything because it comes with its own USB port and 27 different adapters what happens if you run out of juice on your mobile phone you're stuck up a mountain and you've got no juice on your power gorilla. That's where the solar gorilla comes in. The photovoltaic power gorilla. That's right, you can charge it from the mains and you can also charge it using the power of the sun. I'll demonstrate for you. If I just plug that in there, it's not on at the moment. As soon as I open my solar gorilla out to the sun, we have charged. So if this runs out of juice, I can recharge it or indeed power it using this. I can then daisy chain it to my laptop, my portable games console, my mobile phone, just about anything. Now the beauty of the Power Gorilla is it works using lithium polymer technology instead of the more common lithium iron technology. There's no metal casing to squeeze the electrodes and separators together, so already it's a lighter prospect. Also, because you can really make a compact unit, its energy density is up to 20% greater than a lithium iron, so you can carry it anywhere. It really is a mobile mini power station. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week, but we'll be back at the same time next week with more Web TV. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter for regular updates from the show.